was good, y'all. Today's topic is going to be the myth, the machine, the legend, the no shield for you, shield breaker, machine himself, Setrim, the god of shield breaking. So, for Setrim, we're going to go over his skills, over his talent, what skills to max when and when to fully max out. And then I'm going to again going to bring you a mid game, late game, end game build and follow it up by explaining an example of using Setrim and Void Drift. Because Setrim is fucking amazing for Void Drift. But more to that later. Let's get into his build. So for the talent. Each attack launched has a 20% chance to unleash fists, smashing the target and dealing 140% damage, inflicting the target with stun. So he's getting a debuff, he's getting some sort of crowd control. And the fewer the targets in range, the higher the extra damage dealt up to 20%. So if there's only one target in range, he's going to be able to deal 140% extra damage, adding in an extra stun, which is obviously quite nice. But honestly, at a 20% chance, it's nothing you can rely on. It's pretty much a bonus, right? Our slow attacking boy is pretty much getting a bonus. And what do I even mean with slow attacking boy? Oh man, Satrum has one of the lowest attack intervals imag imaginable to humankind. 3.5 seconds. That dude attacks slower than your grandma. So, let's get back into the skills though. For the basic attack, we have the piercing attack, dealing 120% damage from one enemy. Obviously, max out, so normally 100%. The second one, one of the main reasons why he is the shield breaking goat, Devastation increases obviously a flat damage increase of 10% unleveled and then dealing 30% extra damage to shield without any skill ups. And then going up to 15% all damage increase and a 50% extra damage to shields. And now even one thing that makes Satrum even better. When the hero attacks one target multiple times, so if he continues targeting and attacking the same target, he increases his crit rate and crit damage by 1 and 2% respectively, stack uh, each time for 5 seconds, stacking up to 15 times unskilled and going up to 22 times. So normally 15% crit rate, 30% crit damage, going up to 22% crit rate and 44% crit damage. This is also one of the main things that makes Satrum unique because we, he gives us a bit more freedom. He allows us to build him and uh, go back on certain subsets, but obviously we're going to get to that later. And now the key part of Satrum. Basically, you can imagine Satrum as a walk-in ultimate. He's not gonna shine, he's not gonna do much if he doesn't have his ultimate, but oh boy, if he goes into his ultimate, shit's about to get deleted. So, switches to fortress stance and increases attack range for 15 seconds. Doing the skill constantly bombards targets with continuous attacks that deal 25% damage and gradually increases attack speed. And after reaching the max attack speed limit for his ultimate, he's going to go into the overloaded state. And the overloaded state increases his damage by 70%. After this ultimate ends, and also the overloaded state, he's going to go into a downtime. Pretty much as you can see in the video there, shut down and not attack for a couple of seconds. In this case, 8 seconds. So, what skills to max? Satrum's major role is going to be an run a, a pretty much a standing ultimate nuker that has a major effect on shields. So, number one, you want to stop or you can stop once you have the le max level ultimate. Not, not completely max level, level 4 is fine. So, getting the max damage multiplier for the overload damage, so getting to level 4 ultimate is fine. And the second condition for stopping with Satrum is going to be you want at least level 3 on the Devastation Passive, alright? So you want at least to take uh, to do 40% extra shield damage instead of 30. And this one is pretty much whatever. It doesn't necessarily matter how high this one is. So the goal is level 4 ultimate, level 3 Devastation Passive. Obviously, once you then start wanting to go into higher gears, wanting to max your number, Satrum is one of the most promising targets with investing skill crystals and legit max them out. It's it's never really a bad decision to go all out and completely max and finish Satrum. Alright, this already brings us to mid-game gearing. And for mid-game gearing, we're going to go from left to right, explaining the gear pieces and the thoughts behind it. 
And one thing you're probably going to instantly see if you take a look at the stats on the right side there, you're going to see, huh, 84% crit rate? Wait, aren't we supposed to run at least like 90% and preferably 100% crit rate? But yeah, if we do remember, he gives crit rate. And obviously you might, you might be thinking, oh, but it's only for 5 seconds. Like I said, Satrum is a walk-in ultimate. So in his ultimate, he's going to be easily able to stack that Anni Annihilation passive. And if he stacks that Annihilation passive and all of his damage really comes from his ultimate, you're going to be able to hit a 100% crit rate in ultimate. Satrum is totally and perfectly fine sitting at 80% crit rate. Satrum can sit at 80% crit rate. And that means one of two things. Number one, you either throw one piece of crit rate completely out of the window and go with the piece that has, for example, only attack bonus, crit damage, and maybe like flat attack. Or you are able to use pieces on Satrum that might not have enough crit rate for your other characters. So, for example, you can use uh, a lot of plus 15% pieces, right? You could technically use uh, four plus 15 pieces, right? And then may maybe another plus 15 piece and Satrum is going to make up for the difference. He's going to allow you to use pieces that roll worse and you wouldn't normally be able to use them. Satrum is really, really, really build friendly. So yeah, left to right. Again, the usual sets we have Calamity, Annihilating Might and the Whirlwind set as our set options. And why build a set on the left side? Because you only need two pieces and the main stats are fixed, making it easier to build a set. Substat wise, we only need two stats attack bonus and crit rate, and we're going to search for those on both. Everything besides that, be it attack flat, attack speed, crit damage, are all going to be a bonus. So if you have those, nice, put them on them, but they're not super required. Then let's get onto the right side. As you can see, the right side, we're going to run a broken set, which, especially for the mid game, is absolutely fine. And what do I define as the mid game? The mid game pretty much refers to gear rates up to 18, easily up to 18. You're going to be able to deal with anything up to stage 18, so clearing stage 18, running broken sets. You don't need sets to go to the 18s of gear eights. So for the right side, we are going to run a main stack attack percent. And there's only one important set you need to look out for a main stack attack percent, and it's going to be crit rate. So attack percent in the top, crit rate at the bottom, and this time three times attack percent. And you might be asking yourself, ooh, couldn't we maybe already try to introduce some crit damage? Again, Satrum's passive already gives you some extra crit damage, which makes sense to then go further into the attack. Again, based on the damage formula, that higher attack means higher base damage. So, uh, so the multipliers have a bigger impact, yada, yada, yada. And yeah, we're going to run a triple attack percent and substrate wise again, if you can somehow manage it, rate reading, attack speed, attack flat, crit damage, all those are going to have a good impact on his build. But one interesting thing with Satrum 2 is Satrum would be, especially early on, mid game, even into the late game, totally fine running zero. Yes, zero attack speed because his ultimate increases his own attack speed. His ultimate allows him to build up attack speed himself, right? Satchim is so easy. You can build him with 80% crit and 0% attack speed, right? You don't, you don't really need to worry about stats. You can just give him crit damage, give him attack, give him 80% crit, and you're done. You're done these, right? And this concludes at least the gearing perspective. And let's get into the most interesting part again, which is obviously going to be artifacts. And for artifacts, we obviously have the usual suspect, right? Ancestry Teachings, as on every other hero, if you have another Ancestry Teachings copy besides your Dolores, put it on Satrum, it's going to put in the work. Furthermore, we have Idrit's Gaze. Idrit's Gaze works on Satrum, though if you do decide to equip an Idrit's Gaze on your Satrum, what you do want to do is get rid of one attack percent piece, because again, based on the damage formula, you're going to ignore more defense, allowing you to go less in attack. And for that one, we would then search for oh, where is it? this piece, right? A, keep in mind crit damage. For a crit damage piece, you need three, uh, you need two subsets instead of one. It needs to have crit damage in the main stat, crit rate in the substat, and attack 
bonus in the subset. So you do need two subsets compared to one subset if you would be running the attack percent main set version. And this would be the bit uh, if you would be considering running an Idris case. And besides Idris case, we have a couple more options, which is going to be Watchguard's Ambition for gear rate 3, so 10% uh, increased damage to flying units, and Taunting Gaze, which is pretty much alright. Again, I'm going to rank them somewhere over here. And now you might ask yourself, hmm, if Ancestral Teachings works, why aren't we going to use like some of the more usual legendary artifacts or marksmen? So we're going to be Broken Nightmare and uh, Shadow Gaze. Broken Nightmare and Shadow Gaze. Why not Broken Nightmare and Shadow Gaze? This again refers to him having abysmal, abysmal attack speed. Satrum has abysmal attack speed, which would also translate into an abysmal uptime besides his ultimate. So they, they can't really compare to uh, Ancestral Teachings because Ancestral Teachings is just going to be active anyway and it would only really uh, be active in his ultimate. Which is why you can just cross out Broken Nightmare and Shadow Gaze. Alright, this concludes the mid game. This already brings us to late game Satrum and we are going to do the usual left to right. So for the left side is going to stay with the usual candidates. Calamity, well, when annihilating might. Obviously, if you do have a warlord set, use the you can use a warlord set instead of calamity. And we have the same subset. It's going to be attack bonus crit rate and attack bonus crit rate. Obviously, any if you can find anything past that, it's going to be beneficial. But those are around the minimum requirements. And for the right side, this time we are going to go with a different split. So crit damage, attack bonus, attack bonus and one of the main reasons for that is going to be Satrum's incredibly high base attack compared to other marksmen. He has around, you could say basically a thousand attack more base compared to any other marksman really, which allows him to obviously based on the damage formula, yada yada, overcome the enemy defense more easily, allowing us to go less and lower in attack and higher in crit damage which is the reason why you're going to see a 1 to 2 split. So 1 crit damage piece and 2 attack bonus pieces. You might be asking yourself, oh, but why aren't we running 2 crit damage pieces? Because Satchim himself doesn't really have a lot of sources of penetration and we are already getting overfilled on crit damage through his annihilating passive and it would just be diminishing returns if we would go higher in crit damage past that point really. So, the most important part now obviously is again going to be sets. At the top we have the Night Terror set. Important to know for the Night Terror set, you do need at least 55 attack speed because if your Saturn doesn't have at least 55 attack speed, he's not going to get past the 3.5 second interval and get that one below 3 seconds because as you can see it obviously only increases the damage for 3 seconds after making a crit hit. So your Saturn needs to attack faster than every three seconds. The next set is going to be the Doom set. After that we have the fatali Fatality set, the Fracture set. The Fracture set obviously being uh, uh, the same reason for why we're not going to run uh, two crit damage main sets is oversaturating the crit but it's still not bad enough if you can at least make a set out of it. And for the last ones we have the Wisdom and Glacier set. Wisdom obviously only functioning for 10 seconds out of 15 seconds for his ult and the last seconds of Satrum's ultimate being the most important. So Wisdom isn't really going to work with Satrum. And then we have the Glacier set. Satrum has alright-ish base HP at 12,000. So if you find a couple of HP sets you can make it work but it's not going to compare to Night Terror, Doom set or even the Fatality set allowing Satrum to penetrate even more defense. Which already brings us to substats. Substat wise we again already talked about the split so subset wise is going to be the same requirements but you still want to start implementing subsets and for those subsets attack speed can take a lesser of a position and you do want to see something along the lines of flat attack or preferably rage region because Satrum is really slow in generating rage so a rage region stop would be fine and obviously if you have it give him some attack speed. For late game artifacts we have ancestry teachings, nether messenger, Blood Bond Signet, Idrid's Gaze, and Soul Reaper's Insignia. And rank, I'm obviously again going to rank them for you. 
and reason for Idrit's gaze ranking so low is mainly going to be the fact that Setrum's base sets already that good, right? We already talked about it and he doesn't really benefit from it. One of the main reasons why Idrit's gaze is so good on an Idril is because an Idril only sports 3000 base attack while a Setrum even without awakenings has 4700 base attack. All right, this concludes. This brings us to Endgame Setrum. And before we talk about Endgame Setrum, look at this BP. Setrum is a BP monster. Setrum eats BP for breakfast. Setrum was born with a hundred thousand BP. And the most important part about getting a high BP Setrum isn't actually going to be his gear and not super necessarily his artifact, but his skill ups. A fully skilled up Setrum has ridiculously high BP. So. Now let's obviously get into the build, we're going to go from left to right and for the left side the the only change compared to before is going to be that the Wormen set is going to fall off and also compared to other characters the Warlord set never really was super effective in the first place and we have the options of Calamity set, Annihilating Might set and Warlord set and subset wise we are going to be looking for attack bonus, crit damage, crit rate, attack speed for the weapon and if you uh, you already see what I did here, huh? I am using a piece that doesn't have any crit rate at all to make the most out of our RNG. So you we are only running 92% crit rate, but that's totally fine. And we can make a use of this piece, which we which would be be hard pressed to use on anyone else besides Satrum. And for the chest piece, it's going to be the usual attack bonus, crit rate, crit damage. Why? Because those stats can even appear on non-ancient pieces. For the right side, we have the choice between the three usual sets, so it's going to be Inferno Raw, Soulbound, Arcana, or Ageless Wrath. And here, an interesting thing to state is Inferno Raw works very, very well with Setrum and somehow skates very good with his uh, ultimate, allowing this basic attack multiplier to work in his ultimate. And Inferno Raw is the goated set on a Setrum. Inferno Raw is the best set you can put on a Setrum. Soulbond Arcana doesn't work on a Setrum. Not even come doesn't come close to compare to an Infernal Raw set. And the last one, Ageless Wrath. We already talked about it briefly before. The overstacking of crit damage, not like diminishing the returns of his passive. It is not the optimal choice, but if you don't have anything else or if he's not like your main focus, you can definitely run him in an Ageless Wrath. It's going to be fine. It's just not going to be the optimal. This already brings us to the main stats and here we're going to again see the usual attack bonus, attack bonus crit damage split with the with the before mentioned reasons of, um, of him already having very high base attack and also him getting crit damage from his annihilating passive. Which brings us to a build looking somewhat like this. You could also swap a Warlord set for an Annihilating Might set to go higher in crit damage which would be fine and which is also what a lot of people are running in Guild Boss. Attack speed wise we have a lot of attack speed, we are mainly getting that from subsets and a bit of the set effect. You don't need to really aim for anything high and it also wouldn't be too bad if you had Ancients that would be missing attack speed in the first place. And Rage Region, if you can get a subset of Rage Region it's going to be fine, it's going to allow your Setrum to work smoother to pretty much go better with your Dolores, especially considering Guild Boss, but it's also nothing super mandatory. Which already brings us into the artifacts and for the artifacts choice wise we pretty much only have the choice of Nether Messenger, uh, Bloodborne Signet and Soul Reapers Insignia and out of those three Nether Messenger is pretty much the gold to Setrum artifact, you don't really need to talk about anything else. Soul Reaper's insignia doesn't stack well enough for him and also can't be used in Guild Boss. And the reason for Bloodborne Signet being so bad is the aforementioned reasons of diminishing returns of crit damage. So yeah, if you want to build your Setrum, give him a nice juicy Nether Messenger. Now on to Setrum and Void Rift. This is just going to be a rather short one, but if you do want to see the extended version, if you do want me to show you all the possible placements and all the uses for most, if not all, Void Rift stages, do make sure to tell me about it in the comments. 
And for this one over here, we're going to use a Dolores, and that Dolores is going to run a Spirit Spiriton. That Spirit Spiriton is of major importance, unless you are uh, obviously in possession of a Venoma, but <laughs> who actually is that? And then we're going to use our endgame build, see, uh, etc. But don't really worry about the damage numbers because we do have a Dolores in the back to make it easier. This is going to be nightmare difficulty. And yeah, let's get into the stage. We are going to start the stage off by placing down Satrum. Obviously skipping time forward a bit. And then bring in our tank to take the aggro. And now here's the interesting part. As you can see, Satrum actually isn't attacking the boss, right? Satrum doesn't really reach the boss. And this is a particular thing about this stage. The boss or the boss mob, the big mob, spawns in further behind or further in front and this time he didn't so what we're going to do is I'm going to quit the battle restart it and if it takes long I'm just going to set a cut and then we're going to cut into Satrum actually being able to hit. We can check out if it already instantly works. We'll see. So we're starting off with Satrum first. Oleg. Perfect. So yeah, as you can see this time, even though Satrum's position didn't change, the boss spawned a bit further and you can slightly see it here, his feet actually reach into Satrum's range. So yeah, Satrum this time is actually able to hit the boss and what we're going to do now is we're going to start counting the rocks. And that's going to be to find the perfect moment to place Lord. So that was rock number one, rock number two, this is rock number three. And as soon as we can see the PNG of the fourth rock, that's when we can already place on Dolores and simultaneously start up Satrum's ultimate. So yeah, Satrum's going to focus on those minions a bit, but that's not of major importance. And here we can then also activate Dolores and completely annihilate this rock thrower, eliminating the need to worry too much about those st uh, thrown stone rocks. And uh, a simple example is you could also then use Satrum on the bottom lane to take care of this big dude over here. And this trick also works for those uh, stone throwers in Araka boss fight for this phase one. Again, if you want to see an extended version, do make sure to tell me in the comments. And that's it from this guide.